Hello, my name is Benjamin Chang, and it's great to be with you. In my day job, I work as an A&E doctor in North London. Uh, but actually, my first job when I qualified for medical school was working in a psychiatric intensive care unit. In 2015, I was diagnosed with mixed anxiety and depression. It spawned from a really stressful time in my life when essentially the stresses of my uni life and personal life accumulated and just got too much. I spiraled into this pit of low mood and panic attacks. And I spent the next three years on antidepressant medication. It was the darkest time of my life. And even now, I struggle to put into words what was going on in my head. One in five students suffer from mental illness. And the COVID-19 pandemic has hit students hard, with over two thirds of young people reporting that their mental health has gotten worse since the lockdowns of 2020. I remember back to April, when we were coming to the end of the first pandemic wave, at least in my area. And my A&E department was hit immediately by a second wave of mental health cases. I saw so many attempted suicides, psychotic breakdowns, drug overdoses come through our doors. It was awful. Now, I don't pretend to have any clean easy answers to the struggles of mental illness. And anyone who says they do is lying. Because mental health is complicated. And everyone who struggles with mental illness has a different experience, a different story to tell. For some people, the key to helping their symptoms will be taking medication to rebalance the neurotransmitter levels in the brain. And there should be no shame in that. I often say to patients, if you had a pneumonia, you'd want my antibiotics. It shouldn't be any different for mental health medication. For others, the key will be talking therapies. Having that space to externally process events and memories or being guided in undoing unhelpful thought patterns and developing positive ones. For others, the thing that will help most will be dealing with a particular life circumstance, resolving that interpersonal struggle, or coming out of a toxic environment, or eating and sleeping properly. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to mental illness. For everyone who is struggling with mental illness, I do believe that the message of Christianity, the gospel, is good news. To the one who is struggling with body image, that sense that they are the wrong shape or size or type of person, the gospel tells of a God who created us and who endowed us with immense and intrinsic value, as we are, imperfections and all, because he made us in his image. To the one who is crippled by anxiety with how out of control the world and the future seem, the gospel tells of a sovereign God who holds the world in his hand and who is in control of the big and small things, your life and mine. To the one who is weighed down by inferiority, that sense that they are not as good or as sorted or as righteous as everyone else, the gospel says that we are all imperfect. We are all flawed. We have all missed God's moral standards for goodness. As the Bible says, there is no one righteous, not even one. 
for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. To the one who is struggling with perceptions of reality, of discerning what is real and what's not, the gospel tells of the word become flesh, of ultimate reality and the source of the universe being born as the real, physical, tangible baby Jesus on that first Christmas day. And if we want to know ultimate reality, we need only to look to him. To the one weighed down by guilt or shame or fear because of actions they have done in the past or actions that have been done to them. The gospel tells of a Jesus who died on the cross and in doing so bore our guilt and shame and fear and in exchange gave us a new life, a clean slate and a righteousness before God. To the one weighed down with feelings of loneliness and isolation and feeling unloved, the gospel tells of a God who demonstrated his love for us by sending Jesus to die in our place and who, by his spirit, is always with those who have accepted his love for themselves. And to the one who feels hopeless that there is no light at the end of the tunnel, the gospel tells of our hope of the new creation, when Jesus will come back to earth and will make all things new, cleansing this world from all of its sickness and darkness and death. And those who have accepted him for themselves will rise from the dead and live in perfect joy and peace with God forever. The gospel is good news for the struggling. Now, God doesn't promise to heal our illnesses, not in this life anyway. I still struggle with occasional panic attacks and depressive episodes. And working in A&E during this COVID-19 pandemic has pushed me to near breaking point multiple times. But I do believe in the God who knows and who cares and who stepped down from heaven to earth, into our darkness, into our pain, to bring good news to the struggling.